is up humanoid nation so today's video i'm reacting to is by triple jump 10 strangest wrestling video games of all time i have played some wrestling games i'm wondering what the 10 strangest ones will be because like hulkamania rage and rocker one what's the one where like the just everyone looks like they're on steroids <laughs> oh my god i forgot that it just looks so shit but anyway, let's see what they have. Let's go! Most wrestling games attempt to replicate the professional wrestling experience as closely as possible. From 1989's WWF WrestleMania for the NES right up to WWE 2K22 Let's not talk about 2K22. They try to represent the televised product as best as the available technology allows. Let's never talk about However, 2K22. For some developers, the bizarre world of cheap shots and chairs to the head just Was wasn't enough and they decide to add stranger and stranger ingredients yeah. to the mix in order to stand out. No, that was 2K20, out. wasn't it? Game. This was usually a terrible idea resulting MTV, in titles like the so oft discussed and match. critically panned The Simpsons Wrestling. We've talked about that game loads, however, so you won't find it on this list. In fact, you are going to find a lot of things that are weirder Watch and some things that might be even worse. You've been warned. Anyway, I'm three-time Triple Jump Backyard Wrestling Champion Ben, and here are the ben, 10 strangest wrestling back. video games of all time. Number 10. Backyard Wrestling. Don't try this at home. Backyard you wrestling, wrestling made you a growing up? Did you have a sibling who was either younger, smaller, or both? If so, then chances are that said sibling has been subjected to various dangerous wrestling moves including flying elbows, running clotheslines, choke slams, and even a hurricane runner or two. Take that standard childhood horseplay, move it into the back garden, and ramp up the violence horrifically and you've got Backyard Wrestling. Backyard Wrestling Don't Try This At Home and its sequel allows players to delve into the world of hardcore amateur wrestling, where ladies and gentlemen of questionable mental stability do unthinkable things to each other. Is this the one on Beyond the Mad where New Jack was like trying to put Van Piro through a table and Piro says, I don't want to hurt you, bruh. Is this from the game? Yeah, I think this is the game they were talking about. Together with barbed wire, light tubes, and furniture. This was based on an actual phenomenon that peaked in popularity during the late 90s and early 2000s. Yes, people actually do this stuff in real life. Ow. The games have a little bit of star power behind them too, featuring the likes of hip-hop duo Insane Thank Clown Posse and two-time ECW World Heavyweight Champion Sabu. Still, just Sabu. because celebrities do this sort of thing doesn't what about mean that New normal, rational people should. If you feel the need to jump off a shed and through a table, probably best to do it in the virtual world. Number 9. WWE, WWE Crush, Crush Hour. Hour This THQ published WWE tie-in game this was one released time. in 2003 Never again. when the likes of Stone Cold Steve Austin and The Rock were still showing up to do some grappling on a more or less regular basis. It combined the familiar world of sports entertainment with the brutal metal-on-metal metal mayhem of vehicular combat. If I wanted in to WWE play Twisted Crush Metal, Hour, I would go play Twisted Metal. from a metal. roster of over 30 WWE superstars, all with a unique set of wheels that is vaguely themed around their personality or attire. The action unfolds in arenas based on WWE shows and match types, and the aim of the they game is to, to blast your metal, opponents with wasn't. your mounted guns until you're the only wrestler left Twisted standing was better. or driving. It's kind of like that WCW monster truck match between oh, Hulk God. Hogan and the Giant, only with guns and someone doesn't fall off a building at the end. Unfortunately, WWE Crush Hour didn't win over many critics, and it was unanimously agreed that the game paled in comparison to Combat Racer series Twisted Metal. Yep. Still, Twisted Metal didn't have commentary by WWE legend Jim Ross, did it? No, it didn't. That might be yet another reason. Still kind of a bad game, so though. Well. Number 8. Death Jam Vendetta, Vendetta. Combining hip-hop with wrestling isn't anything new. From AEW's Platinum Max to the unseeable one himself, and even all the way back to Men oh, on a Mission on a Oscar mission. in the mid-90s, grapplers aren't afraid to enter the ring to a funky hip-hop beat from time to time. Back in 2003, though, EA decided to take this combination to its logical conclusion with Def Jam Vendetta. In the That's story mode, game. players choose from one of four protagonists and then embark on a quest to reach the top of the underground fighting league, taking on personalities such as Ludacris, DMX, and Redman as they progress. Was it Meth and Mad also in this? WWF No Mercy, Def Jam Vendetta is a dream come true for those who love the raps as much as they love the graps. There was also a sequel that continued the story. Def Jam Fight for NY was released in 2004 but added different fighting styles such as kickboxing and martial arts, straying away from the straight up wrestling of the first game. That's not for me though, I'm proud to be a rapping wrestling purist. <laughs> Number 7. Wrestle Quest and Wrestling Cardboard Championship. What the hell? We're going to talk about two upcoming wrestling oddities at once. Wrestling now that's right, it's a two for one entry. That's what you get here at Triple Jump. Value for money. 
WrestleQuest and Wrestling Cardboard Championship are both, at the time of recording, still upcoming games. But we couldn't leave oh, them out upcoming on this games. Like this, they are both clearly totally bonkers. Oh, does First it even count if it hasn't come up? Which takes the crazy world of professional wrestling and turns it into a top down, turn based RPG detailing a young wrestler's journey to the very top. The characters have been made to visually resemble old wrestling action figures, the likes of which you've probably got somewhere under your bed or in a box in the attic. Somewhere it's almost in the like attic. WrestleQuest is trying to recreate the feel of your childhood itself, bashing your Ultimate Warrior and Ted DiBiase figures together and making fighting noises only with an RPG battle system and a meaty story to back it up. We're all for that. The second game yet to make its in-ring debut asks a question that literally no one has ever asked before. WC what if wrestlers were cardboard boxes? Developer Evil Geometry has an answer, but I think it's more confusing than the question itself was. Wrestling Cardboard Championship at least gives the humble cardboard box its time to shine. We don't know much about this one, and somehow we get the feeling Wait, that we'll know even less. Actually, after cardboard it. That's wrestling. Not stop us, though. It never does. Number six. Hulk Hogan's main event. Yeah, okay. You know what sounds like a horrible combination? Hulk Microsoft's ill fated Kinect controller event. and wrestling. Although, to be fair, Kinect and anything sounds like a horrible combination. Good skills. Hindsight is a gift, though, and back in 2011, someone at American developer Panic Button must have seen some potential in the area. Enough, even, to secure Hulk Hogan's now questionable image. The result was Hulk Hogan's main event. In the game, the Big Yellow Walrus of Wrestling teaches your customizable protagonist the ins and outs of becoming a wrestling superstar. Oh my god! Hogan will teach you about moves, poses, and showmanship, equipping you with the tools to win over the crowd and providing pointers from the master. Your job is to stand in front of your TV and imitate Hogan's gestures as you take your created wrestler from performances in school gymnasiums to packed arena events. Hold on, the you're only controlling him? You gotta bad, make a move? But unfortunately, Hulk Hogan's main event didn't work. This is the, this is the real dark side. Just let it settle. It got rightly lambasted by critics, including us on Worst Games Ever, with reviewers decrying its ugly visuals and boring career mode. It sits at a shocking 26% on Metacritic that still makes it one of the better Kinect games, though. Right? Oh, oh no. Number 5. Oh, Celebrity wait. Deathmatch. Celebrity Deathmatch is another strange? game that critics near unanimously verbally suplex through a table. Following the concept of the extremely lowbrow MTV show, Celebrity Deathmatch presents caricatures that of varying levels of famous awful. people in animated clay form and tasks them How with the TV show look better than the game professional wrestling. Players choose from a roster of what the hell that from looks Justin awful, Timberlake man. to Dennis Rodman and then proceeds to enact bodily harm. Did I just see you, Ron Jeremy? From Justin Timberlake to Dennis Rodman I just saw Ron Jeremy. to enact bodily harm on their opponents until it's time to rip off little clay limbs and rupture little clay internal organs. The game does have character-specific special moves, but these are all superfluous. Hammering the controller with your forehead will usually be enough to see you through. Again, Celebrity Deathmatch didn't exactly wow critics, with reviewers finding the gameplay insultingly simple and the humour outdated. Perplexingly, it was released about three years after the popularity of the Celebrity Deathmatch TV show was at its peak. It's not fully understood why it released so late, but it's safe to assume three that those years three years after. weren't spent polishing That's the gameplay. That is way too late. Number 4. Micro League Wrestling Back in the Commodore 64 days, most fans took their professional wrestling very seriously, and matches between the likes of Hulk Hogan and Sergeant Slaughter were life or death situations. This wrestling game for the Commodore 64 treats professional wrestling pretty seriously too, providing a strategic turn-based take on the yeah, action. Yeah, that's Commodore 64. The that's a Commodore, the right? First licensed WWF game, Micro League Wrestling gave players the opportunity to rewrite famous matches. During gameplay, the action is depicted using digitized photos from the real events, with text commentary from the likes of Bobby the Brain Heenan and Vince McMahon himself displayed on screen. Players choose a move from a list, the computer opponent chooses its move, some behind the scenes mathematics it was a presumably simple time, happens, and then one of the moves still will sucked. connect, repeat, until someone gets pinned. The base game came with only two playable matches, one on either side of the disc, with expansion packs releasing later to add more content. If you had enough of Hulk Hogan vs Randy Savage and wanted to try your hand at Jake the Snake Roberts vs Ravishing Rick Rude, then it was time to put a new disc in and enjoy the excruciatingly long loading times. Spare a thought for the poor wrestling game fan of yesteryear, won't you? I had it rough. Number 3. WWF with Authority In these days of mobile games and the likes of WWE Supercard, card-based wrestling games don't seem all that unusual anymore. It's a waste of time, It was a pretty novel concept. 
WWF with authority later changed to WWE with authority after that company had to give the F to the pandas. To the pandas! The pandas won. Game. Players used cards to build a playbook based on their chosen superstar and they used the playbook to unleash moves and abilities against their opponents. The game was free to download, but enticed players to purchase playbooks, booster packs, and expansions once they started playing, which is a model that we're still seeing frequently in modern gaming. I don't there was care about the card system the in William UK. Regal Starter Playbook. Seems a bit disrespectful to brand Regal as a starter, but I suppose they had their reason for besmirching his lordship. Evidently, you with authority his lordship. is still supported to this day Tri through Triple H. means. So if you're interested in some card-based WWE fun, a bit of light Googling should sort you out. Or you could play WWE Supercard, but that's your no, decision to wrestle with. No, never Supercard. Number two, Rumble Roses. What? Rumble Roses was released for the PlayStation 2 in 2004. It was developed by Ukes, the team responsible for the official WWE wrestling games right up until 2019. Using the same engine as 2003's WWE Smackdown Here Comes the Pain, this Ukes side project is a fairly standard wrestling experience, at least as far as the base gameplay is Rico, concerned. Hamato, and Candy it does Candy. have an identity all of Body its Shadow. own. Though. Rumble Roses, like its 360 exclusive sequel, Rumble Roses XX, ditches male wrestlers altogether, concentrating on an entirely female roster and banking on that oh so eye-catching sex appeal. So it's this like hello. Man. most apparent in the humiliation moves where competitors but tie each other up in complicated respectful. submission style maneuvers that are designed what to look as fuck is that? Uh, compromising as possible. Rumble Roses did have at least one legitimately cool idea though. Each character has a heel and face persona, that's good guy and bad guy for the uninitiated, with different outfits and movesets to match. For example, oh, would you rather yeah. be naughty nurse anesthesia or that's like in every wrestling surgeon game. anesthesia? I bet that's Heel versus face. What are you talking about, today? Ben? Just as those are words I didn't think I'd be saying today. Number one, WWF betrayal. Putting a whole different spin on the old Rescue the Princess trope, WWF Betrayal is a 2001 Game Boy Color game in which players must rescue billion dollar princess oh, Stephanie fuck McMahon. Off. That's right, the daughter of WWF CEO Vince McMahon has been kidnapped and the boss has offered a title shot to the wrestler who can defeat the bad guys and bring her back. WWF Betrayal is a side-scrolling beat-em-up in the vein of something That's like Double, Double Dragon. Dragon or Renegade in which the player's like chosen Dragon, grappler man. kicks and punches his way through various levels, beating up henchmen, other wrestlers, and apparently he into turtle side scrolling the way yeah. to save poor Stephanie. The final confrontation takes place on a rooftop with Stephanie stuffed into a helicopter nearby. My drama for sure. The player can choose between The Rock, Triple H, Stone Cold Steve Austin, and The Undertaker, and the story will change slightly depending on who you picked. Yeah. Just remember, these are the McMahons we're dealing with, so I don't think it's too much of a spoiler to say that there just might be a double cross incoming. That's right, it was he all along, Austin. The story isn't great, well, obviously, but kudos for retaining the showmanship. I don't know what to say to that. Uh, that's just, uh, bruh. <laughs> Our Stephanie is another castle. Try again next time or you're fired. Oh my god. Games. I'm still surprised at the cardboard channel. There's a thing like that. I need to play that. I'm in uh if it, if I don't, if it's free, I'll play it. I ain't spending money to play a, a box. They're cardboard. It's a cardboard box. Oh, Marge, our son is a cardboard box. The box factory. God, I'm dumb. I'm just surprised. And uh, that twisted metal type of game that was basically twisted metal. I played it one time and never again. Def Jam, Def Jam Vendetta, though, was a great game. I, it's not strange. I don't know what they were on, but it's not strange at all. But anyways, that's it for now. Human Nation, Humanoid Freak Out. Bye. Pasito, pasito, suave, suave.